This is a 1927 stucco house that was drilled and cellulose blown in and then those cores were filled uh, and then the outside was painted. Remarkably, and I think in part because it's a south facing house, the sheathing is in really good condition with the exception of that one corner uh, where the front entryway roof uh, was flashed in and there was no kick out flashing installed. And of course that water then hit the stucco and worked its way back in past the paper and pretty much rotted that corner all the way out. We're rebuilding that corner anyway, so it doesn't matter a whole lot, but the rest of the house is in really pretty solid shape. A couple spots underneath a couple windows where the sheathing was a little bit deteriorated. That's typical. You can see as the drone flies around the building, at the corners of the windows, you see some white trails off the corners, sometimes some brown trails, and that's salt minerals in the water as it dries up, or even a little deterioration of the wood substrate, or just pulling some of the black out of the paper. You can see that the chimney itself has some staining, uh, some dirt just from the, you know rain and air pollution in general, uh, but the chimney's in great condition and the wall sheathing behind it uh, looks really good. In fact, the, the only part of that assembly that doesn't look great is the opposite side of the chimney. And you can see that there's been a little bit of deterioration there, but not that significant. You know, the problem with a hip roof is that you can't ridge vent it. So you end up having to put those little turtles all over the thing. Uh, I think that they probably had ice dams at some point and a roofing contractor came along and said, I'll punch a bunch of holes in your roof and you won't have ice dams anymore. You know, we're trying to keep the, the general style of the house intact. And so our new roof that's going on is gonna be a series of hip roofs without a lot of ridge. So we're gonna end up having to put in a couple turtles as well. Not as many as they have in this one. The house is gonna go from 1,100 square feet to 3,300 square feet. We're taking two of the walls out. So the south wall and the east wall are both gonna disappear. The front and the chimney, the east, or so the west and north walls are both gonna stay. The inside is plaster and lath with a hand textured plaster finish and probably 50 or 60 layers of paint. <laughs> And the rooms inside, the finished floors, the general wall locations for the second floor, those are all gonna stay. This house has a poured foundation, which for 27, 1927 in Minnesota is very unusual. And uh, as a result, it is a very straight, plumb, true structure. We're gonna wrap the entire exterior of the building using Zip R12 insulated wall sheathing. I think this is gonna be a really efficient way to achieve that continuous insulation and get foundation and wall insulations to time out properly. We'll be able to have a two and a half inch wall sheathing. Then we're gonna cover that with a uh, Benjamin Obdike's home slicker for a rain screen. And then right now the plan is to cover that with a uh, composite siding material. We should end up with a super insulated house that's super, super durable. It's pretty exciting.